Hello everyone, I'm forecaster Jack Sillen here to tell you about a new product that we have at weather.us for the ECMWF model. Uh, it's a great new composite map that puts a lot of different parameters kind of all in the same place. So uh, I want to show you how to use it, where to find it, uh, and hope you enjoy. Uh, so I was at weather.us uh, there and I went to the forecast tab and then over to the ECMWF model. Uh, that's how I got to this page here. Uh, if you want to uh, get to this new composite, you're going to go to the select parameter menu and scroll down until you get to synoptic composites. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. And you're going to get a map that looks kind of like this. Um, so what does this map show? Well, it shows a bunch of different things. Uh, so the shading in the background here, these reds uh, fading down to the blues over here, this is a parameter known as theta E. Um, well, that sounds fancy. It's basically a measure of heat and moisture in the atmosphere. Um, so higher theta E values indicate warm, humid air, uh, whereas low theta E values indicate cooler and drier air. Um, so that's basically a, a little bit about theta E. Um, the vectors here are upper level wind vectors, so the jet stream level. Um, so that shows you basically where the jet stream is, how fast it's blowing, and in what direction it's blowing. Um, so those are the vectors. The black lines here are 500 millibar height contours. Um, so it's the level, uh, how high up would you have to go in the atmosphere for the pressure to be 500 millibars. Um, and then the white lines are sea level pressure. So that's just atmospheric pressure at the surface. Um, so what does this composite do for us? Uh, well, it allows us to see a number of different large scale processes um, that can bring some fascinating weather. So uh, as I'm making this video, we have a very big storm forecast potentially uh, in uh, a few days from now, um, so I'm going to just click to that because uh, that will kind of show you, um, give you a sense of what this parameter looks like in a real world uh, storm situation. So I'm going to zoom into the east coast because that's where this um, storm is forecast to be centered. Um, so here we are, this is uh, basically for uh, what's going to be close to height, the height of the storm. This is forecast a few days out from when I'm making this video. Um, you can see on the MSLP, so that's mean sea level pressure, we have this low pressure center just west of New York City. It's a very strong low pressure center um, down below 980 millibars. So that's quite strong, especially for this time of year. Um, we have a deep uh, trough at the 500 millibar level, so you can see these contours dip down. Um, and so uh, you can see that the axis of this trough is oriented with a negative slope, so from northwest to southeast. Um, and you can see that it's located behind the surface low uh, pressure center. So uh, whenever you have this um, backward tilting system, uh, as you head from the surface to the upper levels, that indicates that the system is going to continue to strengthen until that upper level disturbance catches up to the surface storm. So uh, this map is showing us that we have a, a low to mid-level environment very favorable for continued storm development. Uh, another thing to note is that this storm is located um, within an area or near an area of very high theta E values. Um, so there's this little tropical disturbance. You can see a theta E maximum near there. Um, but this axis of very high theta E values uh, indicates uh, rich tropical moisture is being brought up from the Caribbean uh, all the way up into New England. So uh, this storm is going to have a heavy rain threat as well. Um, the upper level jet stream vectors um, they show a lot of different things. I could go on for a long time about jet streak dynamics, um, but basically what you have is one area of very high winds uh, extending basically from Jacksonville, Florida up to New York City. Uh, so this is one jet streak, which is an area of unusually high winds embedded within the jet stream as a whole. And then you have another area. So this area of wind is basically out of the southwest. Um, and then you have another area of strong winds that kind of bends around, um, you know, out of the southeast and then out of the south, um, basically extending from central Pennsylvania, western New York, up into um, the portion of eastern Canada here, Ontario, um, between Ottawa and Toronto. So you have these two jet streaks. Um, air likes to rise kind of on the left side of the exit region of the jet streak, and it also likes to rise on the right side of the entrance region. So when you have these two um, areas kind of co-located, which they are in this situation, then that's an additional factor to support uh, low pressure development. So um, basically, big storm. Um, it remains to be seen a little bit how much this 
um, energy can phase into the phase into the storm or not. Um, so this run kind of keeps that tropical system off to the south and east. Um, some of the earlier runs uh, had that getting kind of caught up in the circulation as a whole. Um, but that's basically how you use this um, synoptic composite. Uh, you're looking for high theta E values that indicates moisture, um, high theta E gradients, uh, sharp theta E gradients. So when you have very high theta E values located in close proximity to very low theta E values, um, that's an indication that you have a lot of baroclinic energy. So that's basically energy that storms can use to fuel themselves. Um, so again, that's another checkbox that we're ticking here. It's obviously not as strong as some of the big, deep winter cyclones that we have. Um, but you have this very sharp gradient between high theta E values and low theta E values. Um, one other contour that's plotted on here that uh, isn't uh, super visible is relative humidity in the mid-levels. Those are those little blue contours um, here. Uh, so that just indicates uh, moisture, um, but you already have theta E to kind of figure out where that moisture is. Um, so these contours will give you a rough sense of where you might expect to find cloud cover. Uh, so that's relative humidity values, you know, 80-85%. Um, so that's basically a, a quick overview of how you use the synoptic composite. Um, it's available for the ECMWF model um, and also the GFS model. Um, so you can kind of use these to compare um, in this situation. ECMWF is a little slower and a little stronger with that storm. So we'll see how that plays out, but um, this should give you a good sense of how to use that composite. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy using this composite. If you have any questions, um, be sure to let us know uh, through Twitter, Facebook, or comment on the blog. Uh, thanks for watching.